From its headquarters on Blair Road in Cambridge, Rare Charitable Research Reserve works to discover the most inclusive practices and answers to environmental issues, stewarding the reserve's diverse network of natural landscapes for ecological integrity and future generations. Rare offers Waterloo Region a diverse network of connected natural areas, protected intact in perpetuity. Its leadership in conservation, research, restoration, and education is encompassed in North House, an aspirational 650 square foot solar powered home and working model of green technology. So the Rare Charitable Research Reserve is an environmental institute and urban land trust, just comprising um, over almost a thousand acres now of land in four different locations in Waterloo Region and Wellington County. And right now we're along Blair Road and this is our original uh, property here. So it's just over 900 acres uh, here along Blair Road. And uh, we work in three tiers and that's conservation, research and education. Rare, as an urban land trust and environmental institute, what we work to do really is make the world a more sustainable place. And we do this by making the environment more relevant in people's day-to-day -day lives, uh, by connecting them with the environment, having them get out on trails. We have eight kilometers of trails that are free to the public to access all year round. So essentially what we're trying to do is uh, establish relationships with people and with nature we offer such an array of different things. Um, I'll start with the younger people that live in the region. So we offer uh, education programs to kids and for parents to uh, give their kids a chance to learn about the environment and become stewards of the environment by offering uh, Rare Nature School, which is a new program, but also Every Child Outdoors or Eco Camps uh, in the summer and in the winter. Um, what we also do is we offer opportunities for students uh, in the undergraduate and graduate level to uh, conduct research on the reserve or become interns so that they can practice on the land and learn more about uh, what this land has to offer. And uh, taking it up a notch, we have volunteering opportunities for people of all ages to get involved, to learn about invasive species, why we don't really want invasive species in the region, uh, but we also offer a lot of uh, different programs like events. So we have something called Passport to Nature for people to get outdoors, get to know where they live, which I think is super important nowadays for people to connect with their home region. Uh, and also we have uh, a place just right up there called the Spring, the Spring Bank Farm Hub. So we have 110 different community garden plots that community members can rent out and grow their own food. Uh, learn about where their food comes from and contribute to the food sovereignty of the region. But I guess the, the take home message here is that we want people in the region to know that we're here and available for them to get out and experience nature and they're welcome to come out on our over eight kilometers of trails here and uh, to enjoy an afternoon along the Grand River or to see different species or sounds that they haven't seen before. So that in a nutshell is what, uh, what we offer the region. The Springbank Farm Hub is located just a little north of North House and uh, essentially we call it a hub because we have 110 different community garden plots that are rentable to community members in the region and then we also have two plots that are for the food banks, two local food banks that we have. So we grow um, uh, just a few thousand pounds of produce for the Cambridge Self-Help Food Bank and the Waterloo Region Food Bank here in the region to help with food sovereignty. And then we also have a greenhouse where we grow seedlings in the spring and then transition them into the garden beds uh, in, the sum in the spring, summer. And that is what contributes to the uh, food bank gardens as well. The Eastern Kama Artist in Residence program is in collaboration with Rare, but also the Musa Geddes Foundation. And that actually takes place right behind me at North House. And essentially what it is, it's, it's an opportunity for uh, different artists um, different poets or musicians or visual artists to uh, hunker down and spend a few weeks in North House, typically in the fall, 
and they stay in North House, they live there uh, for several weeks and they can get their inspiration not only from North House as a 100% sustainable home, but nature and the surrounding area and just uh, get their inspiration from the land. North House was created as an entry to the International Solar Decathlon and it was created by a team of faculty and uh, students at the University of Waterloo, Simon Fraser University in um, BC and Ryerson University. So they came together and the purpose was to build um, a sustainable housing module that could be marketable in the future. Welcome to North House. So we're here all cozied up in 650 square feet and uh, North House produces more energy than it consumes. So I'm really excited to get started and show you around. Um, you'll notice when you look around that three of the four walls are made up of glass here. And essentially this is a quadruple glazing window design. There are two panes here of um, glass with two inner films. And on the inside of these glass panes is crypting gas as the inner atmosphere. And that essentially helps keep uh, or helps regulate the temperature of the North House, which I think is pretty cool. On the top here, we have some solar panels and there's also solar panels on the south, east and west side of North House here. And so really it uh, that generates energy for North House, but also to the hydro grid. So you'll notice that the blinds, they're not on the inside of the house. They're on the outside. They're on the outside because they're actually automatic. And um, they come down on their own because they um, communicate with the weather channel that is on top of the building. Based off of the position of the sun and how much wind we're getting, um, the blinds will communicate with that weather station and basically say, okay, well, we're getting too much sunlight right now and the North House is getting too hot. So the, the blinds, they come down and you'll also notice that they come in at an angle so that it still allows for light to come into the building without it uh, changing the temperature of the North House. The flooring is all maple wood, but what you might not know is that on the inside of the wood are these. And these panels are state changing panels. What's inside of here is salt hydrate which is a state changing substance. And essentially we use this for thermal heating. It's able to absorb um, the sunlight and it retains energy during the day. And at night it turns into a solid and releases energy that way. And now if we look up, you'll see that we're kind of riding a wave over here. It's just a wave of these fabric cones across the ceiling and essentially this is um, energy efficient lighting. So it's all LED lights, they're all dimmable. And um, it basically helps diffuse uh, the light and it comes down and focuses on some spaces. So you'll notice here where the table is to eat. Um, there is a point here that gathers. So there's more light that's concentrated down here. And the shape of the ceiling um, helps control uh, sound here and reduces echo. So you must be wondering, well, where do people sleep if this is a house? Here is the bed. This is um, the kitchen area, which as I mentioned earlier, uses um, gray water. So uh, the water is just essentially being reused. So ALICE, which is our computer console, stands for Active Living Interface System. And essentially what it does is it monitors um, the exterior conditions and the interior conditions of North House so that uh, we can have the most sustainable settings um, inside of North House. And it can also be controlled by whoever is residing inside of North House as well. We have over 5,000 uh, species that we've um, tracked not only here on the original 900 acres, but also on the 87 acres that we have in um, Rockwood as well. Uh, so these species, there's so many of them. There's a whole bunch of species of butterfly. We have salamanders. We have all kinds of birds that are noted as species at risk. There's turtles that pass by rare. There's eagles, anything from fish to a deer. 
We got everything at Rare.